you were a little younger. So I'm hoping that today feels like a really easy day. Uh, we are going to talk about finding the area today of different 2D figures. So first of all, number one, what does area mean? What's area? The inside. Okay, so if I'm talking about finding the area of something, I'm talking about how much is there on the inside of it. So we got a whole bunch of different formulas, all for 2D figures. What's a 2D figure? It's a flat figure. So we're going to be talking about 3D figures starting tomorrow, but today we're just going to practice, do you know how to find the area of a flat figure first before we go on to like a three-dimensional shape? So today's just some review on, can you plug in for a 2D shape as we go through? All right, so for the very top there, I have given you the formulas of a whole bunch of different shapes. You've got to know the different shapes in order to be able to use the different notes here. So for my first one, obviously, what shape is this? What? A triangle. Okay, and my area for the triangle is one half B times H. What does B and H stand for? Base and height. Good. When you're looking for the height, be very careful that you're looking for the one that is directly straight up and down. Okay, so height does not mean that it's slanted or tilted. It has to be vertical, straight up and straight down. Good, so triangle is one half times the base times the height. We don't put the little multiplications every time. If there's nothing there, it's assumed that it's multiplication. All right, second one, what's that a picture of? A rectangle. I know it seems silly to write it out, but it'll make your life easier. My area is length times width, which is the same thing as base times height. You can do it either way. What does this P stand for right here? Perimeter. Good. What does perimeter mean? You've got to add the total outside. So if you're thinking about like Miss Damasa had a had a uh, a whole bunch of chickens, right? The area where they graze, that's the area. It's the inside. If I wanted to put a fence around all my chickens, that's the perimeter. Okay, so perimeter is the outside bit on the outside. All right, next one. My screen just froze. But what's your third picture there? A uh, square. Easy piece. Write it down. Why does it say S squared? What does that mean? What's the S stand for? The side. Yeah, so I'm just going to take one of the sides and I'm just going to square it. Or you can do base times height. It's still the same thing. Give me one second. My thing just froze. So I'm going to show you where the squared button is on your calculator in just a moment. But um, again, the P stands for perimeter. If you multiply the sides by four, that'll give you the perimeter. But to find the area, you can do side squared or you can do base times height. You're going to get the same answer. It's just whatever kind of like floats your boat, whichever one you prefer to do. All right. What is this one? Oh, my gosh. Give yourself a pat on the back. Parallelogram. And a parallelogram is essentially just, it's like a square or sorry, a rectangle that's just been like pushed to the side. It's just a slanted one over to the side. Again, it's base times height, but be really careful. The height is not this slanted piece over here. The height is directly up and down. Okay, so that's really important. What is this a picture of? Oh, not quite. Good guess, though. A trapezoid. Nice. Trapezoid. So in a trapezoid, you've got the Bs, B1 and B2. Those are called your bases. Your bases are always parallel to each other. And then you're multiplying it times one half times the height. Again, that H stands for height has to be vertical straight up and down can't be tilted has to be straight up and down all right and then the last one obviously is a circle or is my professor in college used to call it a kirkle i don't know why I called it a kirkle 
Um, you've got the area equals pi r squared. What does this r stand for? Radius. So the radius is from the center to one of the edges. The other part is called what? The d part there. Diameter, very nice. So the diameter is if you go all the way straight across, like from one edge to the other edge through the center, that's the diameter. The radius is half of the diameter. So if I told you the diameter was 20, what would my radius be? 10, it'd have to be half of it. So radius is one half of your diameter. All right. So we're going to take those formulas. We're going to practice just plugging and chugging. Should be really easy. You should go up. This is the easiest day we've ever had, Mr. Masso. I'm going to go, I know. You're going to love it. It's going to be so simple. We're going to take these different formulas. We're just going to plug into the formulas. That's all we're going to do. Okay? So on the front side, it just says, find the area of each plane figure. Plane figure just means flat, a 2D figure. So for each one, we're going to identify which shape it is. And then we're just going to plug it into the equation. So for number one, what's that a picture of? Squared. Okay, and to find the area, what's the formula? Good. Area equals side squared. So you take your side, 8.5, and you squared. Or you can do base times height, which is 8.5 times 8.5. Still the same thing. Okay, now let me show you how to use that button on your calculator. Depending on which one you're using. Great, so we have to know how to use the squared button. It's going to make your life way easier. If you're using your phone calculator, <coughs> you're going to put, you're going to push, oops, you're going to push the button 8.5, and then there's a little squared button that says X squared right under the parentheses. So you're just going to push that button. If you're using the regular calculator, 8.5. Okay, so if you're using the regular calculator, you'll see the x squared button is this third one right here. You're just going to push that button. And you'll still get the same thing, 72.25. Easy peasy, right? That was it. That was the whole question. Now, the only thing I have to do is I have to label it. So it needs some kind of unit afterwards. What's the unit going to be for this problem? Feet. It's not just feet. It's feet squared. So whenever we do area, think about it like this. You just multiplied feet times feet. That gives you feet squared, right? If I did x times x, that gives me x squared. Feet times feet gives me feet squared. So anytime you do area, you must have the squared. If you do not have the squared, it's going to be counted wrong. Okay, so area is always a unit squared. So I'm going to write that up at the top of my paper here. So area is always my unit squared. So whatever your unit is, whether it's feet, centimeters, kilometers, blah, 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 doesn't matter. Always has to be squared. If you don't put squared, you will get it marked as wrong. Okay, so it's always unit squared. All right, so we're not going to do all the ones on the front because I think they are like the easiest things ever, but I want to do um, just a few of the ones that look a little tricky. Uh, so let's take a look just quickly at number two. What's that a picture of? What? Two. Oh. That's a triangle. Good try though. Good attend. All right. What's the formula for the triangle? Area equals one half base times height. So that essentially means one half times the base times the height. All we're going to do is plug in the information that we know. What is the base of my triangle? 15. And then what's the height of my triangle? 
21.3. Now, this essentially means 1 half times 15 times 21.3. Now, when you do these types of problems, there's a number of different ways you could do it. But what I like to do is I make all of my problems into a fraction. And the reason I do that is because right now, 1 half is really easy. But pretty soon, we're going to have some problems with like 4 thirds, 3 fourths. And using those really weird fractions, it's good to just get into a habit of making all of them a fraction. So this first one's a fraction. How do I make these two into fractions? Put them over a 1. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply straight across on the top and then straight across on the bottom. Okay? So on top, you're going to do 1 times 15 times 21.3. And tell me what you got. <coughs> Excuse me. Three what? Three nineteen point five. Good. Okay. And then I'm just gonna multiply on the bottom. What's two times one times one? Two. So essentially, all you're doing is you're taking three hundred nineteen point five, and you're doing what with it? Dividing by two. And what do you get as your final answer? 159.75. And then what do I put as my label? Meters squared. And that's it. That's the whole problem. So don't let the fractions scare you. If you turn everything into a fraction, your life's going to be way easier. Okay? Questions on that one? Feel pretty good? All right, number, we're going to do four and five, and then we're going to flip it over. Okay, number four. Easy. What's that a picture of? The circle. All right, and what's my equation? Area equals what? Pi R squared. Pi R squared. Okay, now remember, the R stands for radius. Did I give you the radius in this picture? No, what did I give you? I gave you the diameter. Okay, the diameter is the whole thing. It's 26. Radius is half of it. So it's 13. Good. So my radius is 13. So I have to take half of it. So in my calculator, I'm going to plug in pi times radius squared, and my radius is 13. So in my calculator, I'm going to put pi times 13 squared. Now, when you do this, what I suggest is do the squared part first. Get rid of that. So what is 13 squared? 169. So in our calculators, we're going to put pi times 169. Now, you should have a pi button on your calculator. If you're using your phone, you got to turn it sideways. The pi button is right at the bottom if you're using your phone. If you're using the calculator, the pi button is... Where's the pi button? It's, yep, thank you. It's this little button down here at the bottom that says EXT. So you can put either pi times 169 into your calculator or you can put 169 times pi. Doesn't matter, multiplication is the same forward and backwards. All right, so put it into your calculator. And tell me what you have. <laughs> So push the pi button. So if you get 3.1, that's just pi. That means you didn't push the equals button. Whoa, what? Yep, so you're gonna push the pi button first to get 3.14 times 169. All right, did anybody not get 530.9? 
It's okay if you didn't, but tell me now. So it's gonna make this chapter very hard. <laughs> All right, 530.9 what? Yards, yards. yards squared. Talking about area, yards squared. Okay, so it's not hard. It's just, can you plug it into the right equation and put them in the right spot? Calculator's going to do all the work for you. All you got to do is make sure you put the right equation and put it in right. All right, let's do one more. Let's do number five. And we're flipping to the back. All right, number five. What is that a picture of? A what? Well, it's got to be one of the ones that's up there on the top. Well, if it's a parallelogram, that means there are two sets of lines that are parallel to each other. So while the top and the bottom look like they're parallel, do these two look like they're parallel? No, they look like they're going to cross at some point. So what's the only choice it could be? Trapezoid. Good. So in a trapezoid, you only have the top and the bottom are parallel. The other two sides are not. So this is a trapezoid. Okay, so the equation for trapezoid is the weird looking one, but it's not that hard. It just looks hard. It's one half H parentheses B1 plus B2. So H stands for height. B1 and B2 stand for the two bases that are parallel to each other. All right, so let's plug in the information that we know. Okay. What is our height of this problem? 16? Are you sure? Yeah? Does anybody think there's a different height? Okay, I got you, major. 16. My other class, somebody picked 16.5. Why is that not the height? It's tilted, right? Height is always vertical. Think about your own height. That's straight up and down. So my height here is 16 times base 1 plus base 2. Now, which ones are your bases? Good. 19 and 27, those are your parallel numbers. It does not matter which one you put first. I'm going to put 19 and 27. All right, my dears, this is algebra now your face. What should I do first? Oh, before I even distribute, you could distribute. What should I do before that? What will make my life way easier? In order of operation, what comes first? Parentheses. Do you see parentheses? Yeah. So why don't we just add these two numbers together? It's going to make your life way easier. What's 19 and 27? 46. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite everything, except instead of this piece, I'm going to put 46 there. Okay, so now I've got 1 half times 16 times 46. What should I do now? Oh, I got nothing to distribute. Oh, set it up with a fraction. Yeah, set it up with a fraction. Put them all over a one. This looks exactly like, hey, look at that problem. Just like that. I'm just going to put them over a one. And then I'm going to multiply on the top, multiply on the bottom. So what am I going to multiply on the top? 16 times 46 times one. I don't really need that, though. You get 736. And at the bottom, what's 2 times 1 times 1? 2. So essentially, what am I really doing? Taking 736 and dividing by 2. So what do you get for your area? 368 centimeters squared. I was just going to say, what's the label? Perfect. Ta-da! And you're done. So that's it. It's just, can you plug it into the right equation? And can you put it into your calculator the right way? Easy peasy, right? Not too bad. Do I have any questions so far?
Are you ready to go to our harder problem? Okay, good. Flip it over to the back. All right. Now, we're going to take a look at number 13 through 18. It says, use the area formulas to find each measure. Number 13 says, a triangle with an area of 45.5 centimeters squared has a base that measures 14 centimeters. Find the height of the triangle. What's different about this problem than the last problem we just did? This time it gives me the area. It asks me to solve for something else. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do first. We're just gonna identify the shape. What's the shape for this problem? A triangle. So all I want you to do is literally copy the equation from the front. What's the equation for area of a triangle? Good, area equals one half times base times height. All right, step one, just write the equation. Step two is take everything that you know and plug it into that equation. So, do you know the area? Yes, it's 45.5, so plug it in. Equals, keep the one half. What is the base? 14. And then what's the height? I don't know, so I'm just gonna leave it as times h. Now, essentially, this is just an algebra problem, and you're going to solve for h as though it was just like an algebra problem with an x there. So what do you think you would do first? So let's look at the left side first. Is there anything for me to do on the left side? Is there anything to do over there? No. It's a number by itself. Okay, so we're ignoring the left side. Let's look at the right side. Now, let's pretend for a second this H wasn't there. What would you do? Set it as a fraction. Okay. So, I'd put a 1 underneath the 14. Continue to ignore the H. Let's multiply that. What's 1 times 14? 14. What's 2 times 1? 2. What's 14 divided by 2? 7. So half of 14 is 7, right? So instead of me leaving this weird looking fraction, I'm just going to write a 7 there, right? I did that math. 1 half of 14 is 7. Now I'm going to rewrite everything else. Times h equals 45.5. Oh my gosh, now you should know what to do. How do I get that h by itself? Divide by 7. Yeah, so it's just an algebra problem and you're just solving for an unknown variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And whatever I get is the height of my triangle. So what's 45.5 divided by 7? Good. So my height is 6.5 what? Oh, it is not. Why is it not centimeter squared? Ah, this time I'm not looking for the area, I'm looking for the height. So since it's just the height, it's just centimeters. So don't fall for that trick there. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, there you go. There's number 13. I want you to try 14. A parallelogram with an area of 160.5 inches squared has a height that measures 7.5. Find the length of the base. I think you can do this one nice and easy. Give number 14 a try. We'll check it in a second. Just like what you did before, write down the equation for a parallelogram and fill in your information. So I'll give you a moment to try.
All right, do we need another moment? Are we ready? Good, easy peasy, right? What'd you get for your base? 21.4 inches, beautiful. So we plugged in 160.5 for our area. I did not know my base. I knew my height was 7.5 and it was just one step yet to be by itself. I just had to divide by 7.5 on both sides. I got my final answer of 21.4 inches. So again, they're not hard, but you definitely have to be careful that you're looking at plugging in the right information to the right equation. Questions? Yes, question? No question, stupid. What's your question? No, I was looking at, I was what we Gotcha, okay. Any other questions? Ready to do two more with me? Then I'll let you finish the rest. Okay. Number 15. A trapezoid with a base measures of 23 and 29 kilometer, kilometers, excuse me, has an area of 390 kilometers squared. Find the height of the trapezoid. So what should I do first? First and foremost, write the equation down. So we're looking at trapezoid. So all I'm going to do is just literally copy it from the front. Okay, area equals, was it one half height? B1 plus B2, is that right? I hope so. <laughs> All right, now we're going to plug in the information that we know. Do I know the area? Yeah, what is it? 390. So over here, I'm plugging in a 390. Equals one half times. Do I know the height? What? Nope, I don't know the height. It says find the height, so I keep it as an H. And then I need to add up my two bases. What are your bases? 23 and 29. It does not matter which one goes where, as long as they're both in the parentheses. Okay. So now here's the equation I'm trying to solve for. I'm trying to get the H by itself. Okay. So if I look at the left side, is there anything to do on the left side? Yes, no, maybe so. Anything over there? No, it's just a number by itself, so I'm going to leave it alone. So now I'm looking at the right side. Now, what can I do on the right side? Good, I can do the parentheses first. So I'm just going to add 23 and 29 together. I'm going to rewrite everything else. So what is 23 plus 29? 52, good. Okay, so now here's my equation, right? We cool so far, just added the numbers together. Okay, now, what should I do from here? Now what do I do? What do you mean? Well, if I put 390 over one, the issue is gonna be they have to be on the same side for me to do that. Which one is the fraction? What? 52. So for a second, just ignore this H. Pretend it's not there for a second. I want to do 1 half times 52. So it's actually, I want to know what's half of 52. So I can put a 1 underneath here, and I'm going to put these two pieces together. So what is half of 52? 26. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to keep my 390 on the left. And these two, when I put them together, is 26. What else do you have left over on the right that I didn't use yet? Yep, my times h. So we're just going to put that at the end, times h. And now it should look easy. Now how do I get the h by itself? Divide by 26. So. Multiplication is nice. You can multiply 
certain pieces together and ignore the variable until the very end. You're still going to get the same answer because multiplication is the same forward as it is backwards. That's why we can pick these two pieces and put them together first and leave the H by itself till the end. So now my last step is I'm just going to divide both sides by 26. And what do you get? My height is 15 what? Just kilometers. Good. That's about as hard as it gets. Can you solve for an unknown piece that's like not in the middle there? All right, ready for one more? Okay, number 16. Find the length of the second base of a trapezoid with one base measuring 12 feet, a height of four feet, and an area of 58. So we're looking at number 16. What should be the first thing that I do? Write down the formula. So it's a trapezoid. So it's the exact same formula we just used. So just copy it down again. Notice that Mr. Masso still writes down the equation every single time. So make your life way easier. Okay, now let's plug in the information that we know. Do we know the area? Yep, what is it? 58 equals, I keep the one half. Do I know the height? Four feet, so I put a four there. And then I've got base one plus base two. 12 is my first base. Do I know my second base? No. So what I'm going to do is you can put it as B2. I'm just going to put it as B because I don't want to get myself confused with the little B2. Base 2 just means the second base. You don't really need that little 2 there. Okay, now it's an algebra problem. What should I do first? So let's look at the left. Is there anything to do on the left? No, so bring it down. Just write it out. Okay, now look on the right. What do we usually do on the right first? Parentheses. Okay, so let's look at the parentheses. Can I put together 12 plus B? No, so I can't do that first. So I have to use something else. So let's ignore that. Let's look over here. I've got one half times four. Can I do that? What's half of four? Two. Yeah, four divided by two. This number right here is just a two. And then bring down your parentheses, 12 plus B. Oh, now this should look like something you know how to do. What should I do now? Distribute. Distribute. Very nice. I'm going to take that two that's in front of the parentheses and give it away to everything that's inside of the parentheses. So I ran out of space. I got to come up here. So two times 12 gives me 24. 2 times b gives me 2b. All right, now you know what to do. Where do I go from here? Subtract 24 from each side. Right, just a simple algebra problem now. 4, 3, 34 equals... 2b, and then my last step, divide by 2 on both sides. So my base equals what? 17 what? Feet. Whew. All right, so what I'm hoping you're noticing is Essentially, all it is is you write the correct formula, and then it's just algebra to solve for the unknown piece. That's all that you have to do. It's just making sure you're doing the algebra correctly, working through it one small piece at a time. All right, now we've got five minutes left. So your homework for tonight is you're going to complete those problems. When you're done with it, you're going to take a picture of the front and the back. You're going to submit it on Canvas. It should be an easy way. Everybody should just start the quarter off with 100%. Okay? This is easy. You may
skip problems 11 and 12. Cross them off. You don't have to do them. Okay, 11, 12 can be crossed off. But the other problems should be easy peasy for you. And actually, you five minutes right now, frankly, you should get the whole front side done right now. It should be very quick because it's just plug and chug. You put them into your calculator, okay? So you can take your time. You can do them now. When you're done, you're going to submit them on Canvas, front and back. You're going to start the quarter off with 100%. Everybody is. So take some time. Do it now. Tomorrow.